author of the Regeneration Handbook, uh, which just came out in June from New Society Publishers. Uh, really proud of it. And um, I decided to title my presentation, My Educational Journey, uh, Seven Lessons from an Environmental Leader, because I think um, one of the most important things that education can do right now is to create more environmental leaders. Uh, so I don't think my uh, presentation offers a definitive answer uh, to how environmental leaders are made, uh, but hopefully it uh, presents at least a few clues. Uh, so I'm going to tell my story uh, using the framework of Theory U, uh, which has been developed by MIT Professor Otto Scharmer, because I think it's a great description of a uh, pattern of transformation. And I think that uh, becoming an environmental leader, at least for me, uh, really has been a process of deep transformation. Uh, so the Theory U process uh, begins with downloading, uh, which is essentially the act of uh, just repeating the patterns of the past uh, and applying them to new situations kind of indiscriminately, just doing what we've always done before. Uh, for me, downloading looked a little bit like this. Uh, this is the house that I actually grew up in, in Wellesley, Massachusetts. Uh, in many ways, I had a very privileged upbringing, uh, including uh, being able to go to what were considered some of the best public schools in the US. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really did not connect with my educational experience growing up. Um, you know, it seemed just to be a lot of uh, memorization without any connection to the real world or what this knowledge was uh, meant to help me to do. Uh, and so it just contributed to my feeling that this kind of idyllic representation of the American dream was uh, false and empty. Um, and in my search for something real uh, in high school you know i turned to partying sneaking out meeting girls smoking drinking experimenting with drugs all that uh good stuff i like to say i was a a rebel without a clue so lesson number one uh we all know this the edu current educational system is broken if it can't work for somebody uh, who has all the advantages like myself uh, it's not working really for anybody. So theory you teaches us, we need to move from downloading to actually seeing, uh, to, uh, getting out in the world, having new experiences, um, uh, really broadening our horizons and taking in new information. Um, so this really, uh, started happening for me when I went on an outward bound course, uh, when I was 16 years old. Uh, my parents were definitely not outdoorsy people. I think my mother camped out once when she was a teenager and uh, got bit by mosquitoes and decided she'd uh, never spend much time outside again. Uh, so just being in nature for three weeks solid uh, was a hugely revelatory experience for me. Um, I know this is true of a lot of other environmental leaders that, you know, the root of their care and their inspiration uh, came from nature itself and really started to feel a huge amount of confidence, uh, starting to understand who I really was and opening up uh, in a big way. I uh, shortly after this course, I did a kind of 180. I was repairing my relationship with my parents. I started getting interested in school again, um, interested in art and poetry, uh, became a vegetarian uh, and got an award for most improved student that year. Uh, so moving from seeing to sensing is kind of making sense of all this new information that taking in and uh, what does it really mean uh, for me? What does it uh, mean for my understanding of the world? Um, so I went to college at New York University, a very 
fancy, very expensive school, but uh, my best education uh, really came from getting involved in activism. I wanted to find some kind of way to give back uh, for all I had received. Uh, so I got involved first with the Students for Free Tibet, uh, then with the anti-war and anti-globalization movements of the early 2000s. Um, and uh, eventually uh, with a local uh, climate action network. Uh, and this was uh, hugely eye-opening, great to experience lots of different approaches to change making and learning so much about the world uh, at the same time. So uh, really don't think you have to go to a, a fancy college like I did to, to get that. Uh, presencing is really about moving into a space of deep reflection about, you know, what is my calling? What is my purpose in the world? Um, you know, where, what is mine to do? Um, and I had become a little bit disenchanted with what I call conventional political activism, the kind of oppositionality of it, uh, the kind of anger and, uh, uh, guilt and, um, yeah, the uh, not getting to root causes, not providing a kind of positive alternative, but I didn't know where to look for something else. That's all I knew. That's all I had been exposed to. Uh, but I had thought about uh, dropping out of NYU uh, when I was uh, an undergraduate and didn't have the courage to do that. Uh, I had thought about dropping out and going to Naropa University here in Boulder, Colorado, where I'm speaking to you from today. And I think I felt like, well, you know, a degree from Naropa, uh, this Buddhist inspired college, uh, what, would, what kind of job would that actually get me? Um, you know, where would I just be throwing money away? And, uh, but, by the time I had gotten to this point, I was ready to uh, take a little bit of a leap of faith. And I decided to uh, enroll in the master's program in environmental leadership at Naropa. And uh, it turned out to be an amazing fit for my interests, kind of joining uh, activism with spirituality and um, gave me the confidence uh, that I needed to lead and um, yeah, really set me on the path I've been on ever since. So crystallizing is about taking that kind of sense of calling, uh, that vision that emerges in presencing and starting to really develop it into something more tangible. Um, one part of my Naropa program uh, was instead of a thesis, we had an applied leadership project and we had to work with a local organization in the community. So I chose to work with an uh, organization called Boulder County Going Local that then became the first uh, official initiative of the International Transition Towns Movement in North America. Uh, we became Transition Boulder County and then Transition Colorado. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Transition is a movement that came out of permaculture. Uh, it started in 2005 in the UK, uh, really trying to apply permaculture skills, solutions uh, to whole communities. You know, how can we create more just and regenerative communities? And um, yeah, this was a really formative experience for me. Uh, I started working for Transition Colorado uh, while I was finishing up my master's degree and then uh, went full time with them after I graduated. And uh, I learned a lot from my uh, mentors, Michael Brownlee and Lynette Marie Hanthorn, uh, both, you know, what uh, what to do, but also uh, what not to do <laughs> and started to kind of form my own vision about how to uh do this kind of uh really revolutionary bottom-up transition work uh but i started to realize that if i was going to help other people to do this work 
which was kind of the role I found myself in in Transition Colorado, I needed to experience it myself. I needed to build a local transition initiative from the ground up uh, because, you know, you can have all the best theory in the world and you can uh, lead people badly astray uh, if you're not connected to the actual experience. So I moved back to my sometimes hometown of Sarasota, Florida, and started uh, Transition Sarasota. And uh, we did lots of different things, lots of educational programs and community dialogues, uh, lots of practical projects, particularly around local food. This is a picture of uh, our Suncoast Gleaning Project, which continues to run to this day, uh, harvesting surplus produce from local farms, uh, anything that's not going to make it to market next week, and um, donating that to local food banks to benefit the food insecure in our community. Uh, now have donated over half a million pounds of local produce, uh, have really influenced our local food bank uh, to invest in that, uh, to invest in uh, bringing fresh produce to those who need it most. Uh, and doing a lot of other projects as well. We started uh, Eat Local Week, uh, Eat Local Resource Guide and Directory, uh, helped to direct some investment uh, money to local food businesses, startups and expansions, uh, and so forth. And learned so much uh, from this experience. Not always easy, but uh, uh, definitely uh, growth provoking. Uh, in this experience enabled me to move into a role where I could kind of authentically teach and help and support others uh, to do this kind of work on the ground in their local communities. Uh, so in 2017, I started working with uh, the National Transition Organization, Transition US, uh, currently work with the International Transition Network, uh, as training coordinator, uh, helping to coordinate a community of about 70 uh, transition trainers uh, around the world, I think about 25 different countries, uh, and wrote this regenerative uh, regeneration handbook uh, in the last couple of years. And uh, I couldn't have done this without going on this, this whole journey. Um, and we all know the... Uh, um, the phrase or uh, whatever, uh, those who those who can't teach, uh, which I think is very insulting to teachers. Um, and I and I also think that it, 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 we should reverse that to say that those who can should teach because their knowledge is really grounded in experience uh, and can be relied on. Um, much more than those who only have a bunch of good theory uh, from their schooling.